What's up you guys? Chet Guthrie, the Dream Poet here, coming to you all from Sapphire County High School. More specifically, their football field. Now, you all are probably wondering why are we out here at some high school's football field? Well, there is a good reason for that. Here on this football field, every Friday night, in the 1960s there was a teenage girl who was in marching band she'd play with her fellow cat classmates and this young lawyer this young teenager she had already had quite a storied music career at this point in her life she wrote her first song when she was five years old she was on the cast walker show at the age of 10 and regular i should say a regular and at the age of 13 she was introduced at the grand old opry by none other than the late great johnny cash now you all are probably figuring who i'm talking about i am talking about none other than the queen of country herself dolly parton i thought we would start here at this football field the very same football field that Dolly played in marching band in. And you all would think that Dolly probably played Kadar or used her vocals, but no. Dolly was actually a percussionist. Dolly Parton started out playing drums in high school marching band. Now, how I know this is about four years ago, I uh, was a student at the University of Tennessee, a communication student, and I was helping work on a well-known documentary called The Library That Dolly Built. It was a, a nationally released documentary surrounding Dolly's creation, her assistance, and how the Imagination Library was birthed. Well, it started out, or I should say the precursor of it, started out with the buddy system. Now, up until that point in the 80s, Sevier County High School did not have that great of a, uh, a, a graduation rate. You see, I think if I'm not mistaken, it only had like maybe a graduation rate of maybe like 50 to 30%. It was not all that high. Now, Dolly and the educators they created a system that you would get with two partners, two people, and throughout your high school career, you all would stay together, hold on, encourage one another, and at the end of high school, you all would get $500. Well, anyway, how I got to know about this is um, I helped work on this documentary, and there was one person we... Uh, we interviewed specifically that I remember at one point he was the mayor of Sevier County or Sevierville I think it's Sevierville um, he was also um, if I'm not mistaken he's also a, I want to say he's also the dean over um, over Lincoln Memorial University in Knoxville but he and Dolly were high school friends or I should say he knew her and anyway, some of the stuff that he told me in my class, my group, that uh, Dolly was just a very energetic teenager. Same as she is today, that same kindred spirit. Also, apparently she was single all throughout high school. But today, you guys, we are here to talk about the legend herself and a few of the locations here in Sevierville. No, no, we're not going to Dollywood, although it is very tempting. No, we are going to see some of the things that the community has memorialized her, and we are even going to go out to the city gates of her childhood home. Now, you cannot go inside. There is a big 10-foot fence, but regardless, I want to see it. 
I think it'll be pretty awesome. So without further ado, you guys, let's do this. Anchor down. Huh, I just now rolled into downtown Sevierville and I'm already getting a Dolly Parton vibe. One of Dolly's all time favorite creatures is the uh, butterfly. I mean, it's kind of obvious in uh, her theme park, Dollywood, but maybe this is why this butterfly painting is here. Apparently it was uh, Wings of Wonder, Hanky Misty Art. Huh. We're gonna have to look them up on uh, Instagram. Huh. Something looks oddly familiar about this mural. Oh wait, I see Red's Cafe there. Oh, it's Dolly. Sorry guys, I, I kind of already knew um blonde hair kind of a dead giveaway but uh there is very something special about red's cafe back during dolly's high school days uh one of her favorite hangouts was red's cafe and it was right along 162 bruce street also another site that dolly used to frequent here along downtown Sevierville. it was bill kilpatrick's soda fountain it was originally a pharmacy and those buildings are still standing in this building right here what is now a barber shop through these doors this used to be a pharmacy and as you all can tell well it's gone through quite a few changes in tenants i mean i do like the classic barber shop shop look which i think that's what they were trying to go for but uh well maybe maybe I do see a, well, a picture right there. I'm not really sure what that is all about. What is now what looks to be a memory tours building. I guess that's kind of like a uh, ghost tour, but, but heritage. But anyway, anyhow, here at 162 Bruce Street, this is where one of the red cafes once stood. As you all can tell, it looks kind of unoccupied at the moment but I'm not too sure about that. But I do find it very interesting that they are using it for a, uh, a memory tours. But now, while we're here in downtown Sevierville, we are going to check out what we came here to see. That is the statue of Dolly Parton. Yes, this uh, statue was donated to Dolly on Feb May 3rd of 1987. And it, if uh, you read various news articles and watch various media, you all will find out that Dolly considers this one of her greatest honors. Yes, it was May 3rd, 1987, when she came out and said, I feel so honored. Now, a statue here in my hometown. Now birds can poop on me all the time. Or it wasn't that way verbatim. I just remember it it was similar to what I just said but a fun thing about this statue is her dad in his later years when he found out about this statue he would come here late in the evening with a mop and a bucket and he would wash this statue yes he was that proud of his daughter and when Dolly found out about this she well a lot of people say she broke down in tears because she was that proud. And for a lot of people, I'm pretty sure if you're a big time Dolly Parton fan, or you at least know of her story, Dolly did not come from money. And neither did she come from middle class. You see, Dolly is the classic story of rags to riches. She used a lot of her impoverished uh, lifestyle with her family as a child, and she used it to her uh, music making ability and now her music talent it was noticed like way way early on as a child in fact her uncle billy owens he noticed this and for a time he would drive dolly around to various different performances and uh actually the day after dolly graduated from sevier county high school 
they went up to Nashville and it was on a fateful day while at a laundromat that Dolly Parton met the man who would become the love of her life, James Dean. Yes, as a child, I used to hear that Dolly, uh, there was old, an old rumor that Dolly did not have a husband. It was just a cover up. But yes, Carl Dean, he was the owner of a, um, if I'm not mistaken, he was the owner of a um, asphalt company. I believe it was that. But anyway, they, they fell in love right then and there and well they've been together ever since i'd probably even say over 50 years and by the way here is a uh, tennessee music highways pathways uh marker now you will tend to see these around the state of tennessee marking the various uh influences that uh, have really influenced uh, artists this one in particular is dolly and if you all do not know you all should at least listen to a few of dolly's songs um one would be nine to five the other one would be jolene and the other one which has actually a very interesting story to it um i will always love you you see dolly had gotten hired on with porter wagner that was kind of like one of her first real big gigs and after about 10 years of working with him she comes into his office and she says porter i want to show you something and what she does is she plays a very well-known song, I Will Always Love You. And that is when she told Porter that she will be leaving the Porter Wagner show. She will be pursuing her own, uh, her own ventures. Now, this did not go over well with Porter Wagner. In fact, it led to a pretty nasty uh, lawsuit that Dolly ended up paying over the course of several years. But near the end of it, her and uh, Porter Wagner did become good friends. And if y'all want to know something, that statue right there is an exact life-sized replica of Dolly. You see, Dolly only stands about five foot three. Back when I did the, uh, the Imagination Library, the library that Dolly Parton built, I got to be five feet away from her. And Dolly is just as energetic and as kind and as, I guess, as polite as you would imagine she is the exact same way that you would see her on a billboard which is always nice um, didn't really get to say that much to her but if you all did not know the reason why Dolly chose that kind of look is when her family used to come into town Dolly would often see what the, the family or what town quoted as the town tramp now Dolly would often tell her mother that she thought that the town tramp was absolutely beautiful well when dolly went on to pursue her music career well that's uh that's the look she went for that is how we have a very blonde-headed lady with some very large uh assets assets yeah but anyway now we are going to go on up to the mountains we are going to visit I wouldn't really say the family cemetery, but there are a lot of Partons and there are a lot of Owens buried at that cemetery. If y'all didn't know, um, Dolly Parton's, uh, well, dad, father, he was a uh, Parton and her mother was an Owens. So let's get on up the road, shall we? I just want to say the view from this hilltop, it's very beautiful. Now, as I was saying, the Canton Cemetery here, it is not owned by the Parton family, but there are a lot of Partons and Owens buried out here. And there are four in particular that I am looking for. Uh, two of them, of course, being Dolly's parents. One of them being uh, Billy Owens, and one of them being another uh, named Larry, which he is related to a very, uh, very very sad tale very sad story in dolly parton's life and i thought while i was here i thought i'd lay down some roses because i thought you know dolly has been a very integral part of my life growing up even though it is indirectly she has played a major part in inspiring me to do more to really get on with my artistic 
creative projects. Even though I'm not really musically inclined. Huh, there's another part. In, um, especially growing up, I mean, my sister, she got uh, Imagination Library books. And even I got to meet Dolly. Well, I won't say, yeah, yeah, I guess I'll say meet. I stood five feet away from her when she was being interviewed for the documentary I was working on in college. And, well, there is one more. Um, my stepbrother, actually, when my stepfather and his ex-wife, now ex-wife, they were at Dollywood, and Dolly came up and held my stepbrother. So, yes, I mean, it's the least I could do. So, we're going to look for a few of these graves. Parton, are you a Christian? Why, yes, I am. Can't say I've ever seen that on a headstone before. I couldn't find Billy Owen's uh, headstone. Um, so, if I'm not mistaken, I have found where Dolly's parents are buried. And it's up this hill right here. But if y'all didn't know, um, Billy Owens is the reason, or I shouldn't say the reason, a big integral part of how Dolly became famous. You see, the day after Dolly graduated high school, her and Billy, they headed up to Nashville. And for the next few months, they lived out of a, uh, a hotel room. Now Dolly, sometimes the situations were so grave that Dolly would try to get creative and eat, uh, kind of make, I guess, kind of like a ketchup and mustard soup. Um, but we have reached the grave of Dolly Parton's parents. This is the grave of a country music legend. On my left is Robert Lee Parton. Robert Lee Parton, he was a hardworking man. In fact, he did what he could to take care of his family. He was born and raised in the heart of the Great Depression. And that's probably the reason why he couldn't read. And that's a big part why Dolly created the Imagination Library was in honor of her father, who, even though he couldn't read, he really, really drilled it into his, ch his 12 children on the importance of reading. And right here on my left, no, my right, A.V. Lee Owens, Mrs. Owens, she was considered by Dolly to have a mountain woman's voice. This woman to my right is the person who sewed Dolly Parton's uh, first coat of many colors. These two people right here are famous in their own right for raising a daughter that would come from a rag to riches story and be the biggest employer in all of Sevierville. So, Mrs. Parton, there you go. I know it's not much, but your daughter has played a very major role in my life. And Mr. Parton, I imagine you would say, it'd be weird for one man to give another man flowers, but this is your grave, and thank you, sir. Thank you. And this third one, this is for little Larry Parton. If you all have noticed, throughout Dolly Parton's career, she has never had any children with Carl. You see, when Dolly was young, her parents, every time that they would have a kid, um, one of the older children would take care of the child. Um, if y'all didn't know, Dolly's got over 12, si or I should say 11 siblings. She was the fourth out of uh, 12 children. Well, they say the reason why is because Larry died at such a young age and he died while Dolly was taking care of him. Some people say that that messed her up so bad that she wasn't quite the same. This right here, I believe, will be Dolly and Carl's resting place. I believe that right here is, will, is uh, where Dolly will be placed when she goes back home to be with the Lord, as well as Carl. And I can say, I mean, it's already beautiful out here. I mean, this is, I would say, a perfect place to call 
their final resting place. It is so beautiful out here. We are now going to a place that I've been wanting to see for quite some time now. And that is the grounds of Dolly Parton's childhood home. Now, if you all have seen on YouTube, Dolly Parton's childhood home is gated. Um, there's no way to get in. Uh, but I don't want to do that because I don't want to trespass. Dolly Parton, I respect too much. Um, then there will be one more location. I'm hoping one more location. And well, we'll leave that as a surprise. So let's get start dri or let's start driving. After about 12 minutes driving down a long dirt road, we have made it to the outskirts of Dollywood's childhood home. Pardon me, Dolly's childhood home. There is something very special about this road. Something that gives me goosebumps. You see, it was January 19th of 1944. It was a cold, cold January night. A Dr. Frederick Thompson was on a traveling house call. You see, Dr. Frederick Thomas, he had been practicing medicine and uh, he had been a doctor in Sevierville for several years, since about the 18, no, no, I think it was like early 1900s. But he was here to deliver a small baby. It was a young girl. The uh, mother who was expecting, her name was uh, Mrs. Parton. And, well, Robert Parton, he did not have the money for the birth of his fourth child. So, in order to pay Dr. Thompson, he pays him off with a bag of cornmeal. This child and this road right here, this is the journey that Dr. Thompson took. A man that delivered one of the most incredible country singers that has ever lived. And now, we're not going to stay here too, too longer, but I still wanted to walk up to the fence and maybe get a glimpse of what is behind these doors. Now, I do want to respect Dolly, but anyway, let's go to one more place. Through these doors is something very special. An artifact that will define Dolly Parton's legacy going forward. It is down these stairs, right here, through a covered door, well I should say behind, behind a rope, but it is this artifact right here. You see, there is a plank of wood from Dolly's first stage the front porch of her mountain home. Now this is the genesis of Dolly's dreams. It's hard to believe that she set foot on that board. And right here, this is her chestnut dream box. Now, in this dream box, yes, it is made of American chestnut, but on Dolly's 100th birthday, she will open it and she will sing her last song. And it is entitled, My Place in History. Only Dolly knows the melody and the content, or at least until 2046. I first laid eyes upon this artifact right here way back in 2018 when I was helping film the library that Dolly built. And actually up those stairs, is where I got to stand five feet away from Dolly. She's an incredible woman, incredible, talented artist that honestly, her legacy will outlive her many, many hundreds of years. And um, she's even recorded songs that'll be broadcast and put up and published long after she's gone. So this is the last place that I wanted to see you guys. And now, I think this is going to be the end of the vlog. Remember, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. 
always means a lot. Goes to show that y'all care and y'all want to see more awesome stories. So remember, don't forget to subscribe. Love y'all very much. Vlog over.